1953, James Watson and Francis Crick published the first accurate model of the DNA molecule. As Phoebus Levine had shown that each nucleotide building block of DNA is made up of a phosphate group linked to a deoxyribose sugar, which in turn is linked to one of four nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Nucleotides are linked in a series from one phosphate to the next sugar to the next phosphate, and so on. After Oswald Avery's landmark paper, James Watson and Francis Crick knew that DNA had to be intelligent. In fact, it made more sense if the order of the nucleotides changed. Information can then be coded into the DNA sequence. DNA, not protein, was the Rosetta Stone for unraveling the true secret of life. Owen Chargaff's base ratios were an important clue in Watson and Crick work on the DNA structure. James Watson and Francis Crick followed Pauling's approach of using chemistry and X-ray diffraction patterns to solve the structure of DNA. Linus Pauling used X-ray crystallography to discover the alpha helix structure of proteins. X-ray diffraction patterns can provide a lot of information about the shape and structure of a molecule. If a stream of X-rays is directed at a crystallized substance, some rays are diffracted or scattered as they encounter the atoms. The scattered X-rays then interfere with each other and produce spots of different intensities, and these can be recorded on photographic film. The resulting diffraction pattern is a unique signature of the molecule. They got two different types of DNA fibers. These fibers gave two distinct diffraction patterns. These X-ray diffraction patterns were made by Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins. They observed more spots and more information on X-ray data and were able to calculate the basic dimensions of the DNA molecule. Francis was immediately struck by the symmetry of the simplicity of the X-ray pattern. It was clear that all the information they needed were there in X-ray pattern. The distinctive X... In the X-ray photo was the telltale pattern of the helix. Since the X-ray pattern was so regular, the dimension of the helix must also be consistent. For example, the diameter of the helix stays the same. In X-ray diffraction pattern, the closer the spots, the larger the actual distance. So, the horizontal bar actually corresponds to helical turns. The vertical distance between the bars, which is 34 angstroms, is the measure of the height of one helical turn. Since the new the height of one helical repeat, that is, 34 angstroms, and they knew the distance between stacked base pairs, that is, 3.4 angstroms, there must be 10 nucleotides per helical repeats. The helix's pitch, or its degree of rise, can be calculated from the angle the X makes with the horizontal axis. If the helix is distorted, an idea is generated how the helical pitch is related to the X-ray pattern. From this X-ray diffraction pattern, they deduced that DNA should be a double helix with the phosphate groups on the outside and the bases on the inside. And from the measurements made by Franklin and Wilkins, the knew the basic dimensions of the helix. They were eager to fit everything known about DNA into an accurate model. But questions still remained. How do the helices fit together? How are the nitrogen bases arranged? Meanwhile, Linus Pauling had submitted a paper on the structure of DNA, which turned out to be a triple structure. Everyone agreed that this model couldn't be right. Pauling put the phosphate groups in the core of each helix with the nitrogenous bases facing out. Three such helices then intertwined to make one DNA molecule. Pauling had forgotten the negative charges of the oxygen atoms in each phosphate group. Facing towards the middle and stacked on top of each other, these charges would repel one another, making it impossible for the molecule to hold together. Almost unbelievably, the men who had written the book on the chemical bonding got it wrong. Linus' mistake encouraged James and Francis to work harder. They began to play with paper cutouts of the nitrogen bases. James knew that nucleotides could pair and form hydrogen bonds, which are formed when nitrogen or oxygen shares a hydrogen atom. He started pairing nucleotides based on possible hydrogen bonds. He compared the width of different hydrogen bond pairs. Some pairs were obviously different in width. If these pairs really occurred in the DNA helix, then the helix would be uneven and would bulge in and out. He realized that adenine could pair closely with thymine 
and guanine could pair closely with cytosine. Moreover, the AT base pair was about the same width as GC base pair. This base pairing agreed with Chargaff's ratios and allowed the bases to compactly stack on top of one another. Guanine makes three hydrogen bonds with cytosine, and adenine makes two hydrogen bonds with thymine. James became convinced that base pairing was the key to DNA structure. Francis also pointed out that because of certain bond angles and the proximity of the base pairs, the two helices had to run in opposite directions. The helices are antiparallel to one another. Using metal scraps from the machine shop, Francis and James built a three-dimensional model of DNA. This six-foot model incorporated what was already known with James Watson AT and GC base pairing scheme and Francis Crick idea of antiparallel strands. Everything clicked into place beautifully. Upon looking at this model, everyone including Maurice and Rosalind agreed that they had the right DNA structure. So, DNA is like a twisted ladder where the sugar and phosphate are the rails and the base pairs are the rungs. The rails run in opposite orientation to each other. The nucleotide rungs are complementary to each other. Wherever there is an A on one strand, there is a T in the same position on the other strand. Similarly, where there is a G on one strand, there is a C in the same position on the other strand. The submitted a 900-word paper to the scientific journal Nature. The paper concluded that the specific pairing postulated immediately suggests a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material. Maurice and Rosalind published their findings in a separate paper following James and Francis. <laughs>